and we want to recap everybody on all the signings. We'll get to all that. Uh, we've got, you know, college basketball going on. Crazy. Tennis tournament no out at Indian Well. It was such a good sports weekend, wasn't it? I'm disappointed. I was watching the Arizona game last night. Uh huh. You stayed up for that one. I was like this. I yeah. missed it. I mean, you're right there, and then it starts a nice streak at the end, and I was out. You missed Arizona, like, like getting com completely shut out for like seven minutes and not being able to buy a bucket. I to, missed to do everything they could to give that one back. I, I missed all that. Yeah, it was it was a good weekend and it's a great a weekend in baseball. Tell you what, have you seen Ivy play for Purdue? I haven't watched a lot of. I uh, watched Big him Ten early weeks. in the year. Best yeah. player in the country. Ooh, that's a that's, that's a hot take you're coming in with hot already. Take. I came so I'm early I, in the season, and now next level. Okay. Next I, I, level. I can't find my hot take Herald soundboard oh. drop. So let's just let's just let's talk about all got? the dust that has settled. There it is. There, ah, we got the visual. Uh, we, 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 we got get, that full screen? No, bill? no, not a full screen. But we do have some dust settling because the dust has settled on the free agent market. There's still players out there. We don't mean to indicate that everybody's signed and accounted for, but the big names, the real big names, have dropped uh, on a series of big deals that we learned of over the weekend. Let's go to John Heyman to try to set everybody up here and catch us up to speed. Correa, Story, Castellanos, all inked and in uniform for 2022. Let's start with Trevor Story going to Boston. This is a big deal that could potentially change the landscape of the AL East. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, six years, $140 million with a fourth-year opt-out for Trevor Story. Big move for Boston. He's going to play second base happily. Xander Bogart stays at shortstop, gives them insurance for next year, though, in case Bogart opts out, which we expect. He still may stay. He's certainly going to opt out, but he may stay. But if he doesn't stay, if he leaves, they have a good option with Trevor Story moving over to shortstop. Uh, you know, one of the better players in the game. Obviously, didn't have a great platform year, so it took a while. And Boston was in there all along. The beginning was Houston, Seattle, Boston, and Colorado. And as a matter of fact, uh, for all the people criticizing Colorado for not doing enough, the Rockies were willing to pay more than this to keep Trevor's story, but he decided he wanted to move on. He wants to go to the team that gives him a good chance to win, and it's the Boston Red Sox. I don't get, man. So the Rockies willing to go higher than what he settled for. Uh, the mixed message is they're paying the Cardinals to take Nolan Arenado. Then they sign, you know, Chris Bryant. I, I think more interesting than the Rockies' end of this, though, is what the Boston Red Sox are doing here. You mentioned the interesting situation with Bogarts with an opportunity to opt out. Maybe that happens, maybe not. And finally, an answer at second base for the Red Sox, who have used a ton of players at that position since winning the World Series in 2018. Nobody really grabbed it by the reins. They thought Chavis, who was homegrown, was going to be that guy. Marwin Gonzalez, who came in as a free agent, they thought he'd be that guy. Uh, Eduardo Nunez was a great utility guy. Christian Arroyo got hot at the end of the season last year. Arouse, homegrown. But none of these guys stuck, and now it appears that that job is spoken for for a long time. Well, and, and he's he's perfect, actually, for second base. You know, he's athletic. He catches the ball clean. And I think also, as you look through these contracts, you've got to look at the new rules that are coming in. Does he have range enough to play without a shift? And he does. So let's go to the videotape. Here's the thing I like about him. In a shift, he's never played second traditionally in a major league game. I love history. I say traditionally because we've watched him do this. He can hit the high lofty fly. Matt, you might be saying a lot of home run calls with this guy in Boston. And when he gets under a ball, this is a perfect pinway swing. He doesn't have to change much. He gets under his home runs. And they're not wall scrapers. He hits bombs. And matter of fact, Boston, he's already done it against you in your new stadium. All right, so this is what we're going to see. I really believe that. But defensively will be the question mark. How will he do? All right, now it's time about tradition. Did the hey, Red this... Sox get a new ballpark? No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Oh, this is him playing okay. shortstop on the so on the left stadium. side of the right side of the infield. Got it. All right, that's Trevor's story that's with the pick in it. That's good. And being able to do some things. So that boy good. It'll be fine. That boy real good. good. That boy dynamite. But, you know, I was a little worried about his arm at the end of the year last year. And I think this allows him to really fully come back, complete arm strength, everything else. Bogarts and him up the middle. Ah, you, we're going to have some great conversations about the best combos up the middle in, in the big league. Yeah, he, There's some strong ones. John, uh, opt-out 
language is really a theme for what we learned of this weekend. We'll talk about how it relates to Correa, who essentially signed a series of three-year deals. But there's also opt-out language for Story, we understand. Yes, uh, fourth year, he can opt out. And uh, it, it doesn't mean he's going to leave, though, because he, if he opts out, Boston then can push him back in and keep him by adding a seventh year for $25 million. Since there's a buyout of $5 million, that would make the contract worth $160 instead of $140. Uh, it will be interesting to see what happens uh, in that fourth year opt-out. So it gives him a little bit of leverage, but not quite the full opt-out that we've seen in many other That contracts. sounds like adding yeah. like I do. So if he, add, if he opts out, he gets $25 million. It's $140 right now, but it goes to $160. They're missing $5 million somewhere. That's how I add. Well, let, let's talk about opt-out language uh, as it relates to Carlos Correa's deal because it's it, it, to, to really understand this one, you have to get the, the whole equation. $35.1 million a year, highest AAV ever for an infielder. It's three years, 105.3. But he could get out at any time, John. Yes, he's got an opt-out in both years, and then obviously the third year is the last year, so he can leave, you're right, exactly, Matt, at any time. So that's what makes this one interesting. I mean, it's interesting from the get-go, though. I mean, think about it. At the beginning of the year, the debate was who's going to get the bigger contract between Seeger and Correa. I did a poll late last year, and the executives voted that Correa, 11 to 8, would get the bigger contract than Seeger. But the reality of it was Seeger had the bigger teams. He had Texas, he had the Yankees, potentially, and he had the Dodgers. Correa did not have that. Uh, he went through the first part of the free agency period, did not sign a deal. He had an opportunity to go to Detroit for 275. Maybe he could negotiate that up a little bit. I mean, you know, I mean, does he regret not doing that? I don't know. This may work out better uh, because he's obviously very, very young. Next year, 27, can become a free agent again. So uh, if he stays healthy, this works out better, but it's a little bit of a gamble as it turned out. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing with him was, was the question mark of his back started coming back up. Anytime you allow people a little time to start thinking, this is what you come up with. But the one, one way I look at it on an interesting, I won't even say positive note, John, is where I think we're headed this way with higher AV for shorter years for position players. I, I, think, I don't think we're going to see 10 years. 12 years, stuff like that, like we did with Harper and other guys anymore. I think you're going to start seeing that. Maybe Soto is, is the last guy to get a long contract like that, but I think we're going to start seeing more guys get more money, less years. I, you know, it's We've seen it with pitching. How the Twins are approaching this, they'd obviously like to keep the player because they made a three-year, a huge commitment to him over a three-year period, but let's take a look at a projected uh, group of position players for the Twins here and have a little steer of a year. I mean, the year before, this has been a, a competitive organization that's been in the postseason. Last year was an, an aberration. You got to throw that out. That was a clunker. And this team is better than that team of two years ago. Uh, Correa add, upgrades them. Bucks and healthy. Joe Smith over the weekend. Yeah. Sonny Gray added so that the Twins are not sitting Blanco's on the Blanco's better. Right. I mean, go ahead, John. You're just looking well, at the camera. Go let, ahead. You let's, move, let's move John on to the next team because okay. we know that the Twins are going to be better than next year. They don't want to concede the division to the White Sox every year. The same way the Phillies don't want to stand around and watch the Mets add with all their riches and watch the Braves win World Series. The Phillies were active over the weekend, John. Yes, Nick has five years 100 million dollars so obviously another nine-figure deal uh, you know he's one of the better hitters in the game 939 OPS last year uh, it added Schwarber just before that so their lineup is lengthened it's outstanding Bryce Harper had a big part of this he certainly advocated for Castellanos they have a terrific offense I think I was on this show and said they were the fifth best lineup even before this I did speculate maybe they would get him now they move up on that. I still have a little concern. I don't know what you guys think. A little concern about the defense. It was not good last year, and they really have not added defenders. That's why I thought that Bryant really fit them. Of course, as it turned out, Bryant got $182 million, which is more than Schwarber and Castellanos combined. So I can't blame them for going this route. It was a little more cost efficient. They got it. two sluggers. I mean, premier bats for 180. 
That's pretty good shopping by the Phillies. Yeah. I, look, I get the concerns about the defense. Maybe there's still a move to be made there in center field. I don't think uh, they, they look at Odubo Herrera as long-term answer there. Bohm's got to get better defensively at third, and I say God, I mean, he will. I have confidence in that. I, I know too many people that really love the player, so I love what the Phillies have done, man. That's a legit race in the East. Nobody's just waving a white flag at the Mets or the Braves. The Phillies are in this, too. And they didn't just get – Two bats. They got premier yeah. bats. Yeah. I mean, Castellanos may be the best hitter right now in the right. game. Right. And then you got Swober, what he brings. I mean, that's 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 pretty good. So uh, John will be with us a little bit later on. John, thank you to uh, to go over who he feels really won the off season. And as we know, you never the team that wins the off season rarely takes that into the fall. Right. But we'll do it anyway because it's yeah. fun and there was so much great activity. Uh, so it's good to see everybody in camp. It's good to see players in uniform. But not all the uniforms have been satisfactory to certain players. And we'll show you what we mean by that. Jake Berger uh, of the White Sox sending this. Uh, did you see this, Harold? I did see that. I've got they a bone to pick with morning. whoever designed these new spring training hats. He sent this to us. Apparently, they <laughs> not a lot of SPF protection and then mm. <laughs> spring training I hat. apologize I was the one who tested the hat and when they came back with mine it didn't show up with the tan lines so they gave it out to everybody I mean I can, yeah thank you I kind of want to see the hat now yeah <laughs> is it is it the meshy stuff yes yeah, the mesh and then it's got little I know it's feed holes in the down the stripes we have, we've got to fix that let's take a break <laughs> just getting started on a Monday uh, Harold has put together a list. You know, all the analysts and experts put together lists, but Harold has jumped in. He's calling it the all disrespect team. Interesting, interesting. It, it will be interesting. And plus, John Heyman on his winners in a wild off season leading into the 2022 campaign. Well, that doesn't make any sense. No, it does. Oh, it will. It will. Teams that won. Respect some folks out there.